Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. Do you believe everything you're told? Maybe you do, but around here we expect you to prove it. Because this is People Are Funny. Yes, NBC presents John Goodell's production of People Are Funny, transcribed from Hollywood. And now here's America's top master of ceremonies, Art Linkletter. We're going to try to prove tonight that people are funny about beliefs. They hear something said over and over again, and they don't ever think again about it. They just accept it at its face value. For instance, say, oh, there's no saying that two heads are better than one. Well, that may be true, but who wants to spend the rest of his days in a bottle in Harvard? That's where you'd be if you had two heads. But on the other hand, on this program in the past, we have tried to prove this with such old statements as... Uh, uh, sleeping like a log. We put a man out in the forest, and we found out that sleeping like a log is not very comfortable. We found that a barrel of monkeys is not so much fun as you might think it is. And tonight we got two college students here on a special trip, and we're going to try to prove the old thing all over again from a different angle. Come on out, boys. Two young fellows from the uh, from Oklahoma. And the first young fellow is Mr. Joe Smelser. Uh, which college is it now, Joe? The University of Oklahoma. And your year up there is... I'm the... a junior. Uh -huh. What are you studying to be, Joe? I'm an English major. Going to be a teacher when you get out? Uh, no. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, I hope to go into television and be a uh, writer such as that. Uh-huh. Uh, do they have a television course at the university? Uh, yes, I have pretty good facilities there. Mm -hmm. You're down here in Hollywood on a holiday. Uh-huh, that's right. And you are? Jack Close. What are you, what grade are you in, Jack? I'm a junior. Mm -hmm. Likewise. You yes. two are buddies. Yes. What are you studying? Pre-med. Wow. You have another what? Four or five years? About another seven. Seven? Yes. Internship? And yes. What are you going to, are you going to specialize? Um, I don't plan to at present, no. Uh-huh. You uh, may get out of college and go into television with him and create a sequel to Medic. You write and you operate, huh? <laughs> well, now, uh, fellas, in college... Students are taught, especially in medicine, never to take anything for granted. Am I right? That's correct. The aim of most education is to encourage curiosity, to find out if things which are stated are true or are not true. If somebody tells you one and one makes two, you should want to prove it, huh? Yeah. All right. I wonder how you'll be on this one. I want you to take... Take one of these. That's a peach, and that's a grape. Don't squeeze it, please. It's the only one we have. <laughs> now, there's a heavy peach and a light grape. Which would land first if you dropped these from a high place? The large heavy peach or the light grape? Well, I guess the large one, but uh, the question kind of makes me suspicious. I don't know. <laughs> you think the large one because it's heavy? Yes. What do you think? They'd both hit at the same time. They would both hit at the same time? Yeah. Either, even though one object was heavy and the other was light? I think so. Yeah. What makes you think so? Have you ever tried this? No, Galileo did. Uh-huh, pretty smart. Galileo did. That is correct. Galileo dropped two different size balls from the leaning tower of Pisa, and he definitely proved this theory that both objects would hit at the same time. But I am skeptical. I went to college, too, and I learned to ask questions. So we're going to send you fellows out of the studio tonight, up the street to a high building, and there you will drop these out on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see which one lands first. Are you willing to do it? Yes. In the interest of science? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, fellas, off you go. And wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come back, come back here. You're here for how long from Oklahoma? A week's holiday? A uh, week. A week's holiday. That's why we select you to be on the show. I'm trying to think of a better way to make this stunt more interesting. You're here for a week. A week, huh? I got the idea. Why should we take any substitute? Galileo went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. We're going to send you to Rome and on up to Pisa, and you go up the Leaning Tower of Pisa and drop the grape, and you'll have to get fresh ones. What do you think of that? Fine. Tremendous. Will you go? Yes. You go? We'll go. All right. Now, this is the way it'll go. You'll take off for New York City tonight on a big United DC-7 mainliner. Then you'll catch a fast KLM Royal Dutch airliner. 
And the KLM is always the finest overseas flight in the hospitality and oh, how you'll eat. Oh, boy, it's just great. Now, you'll fly, you'll be at Rome tomorrow. Then you'll get a car and we'll drive you up to, the, up to Pisa. You'll go up to the tower, drop the grape, drop the peach, report on it, and come back. Tremendous. <laughs> huh? Will you go? Yes. Uh, Irv, do you have some cameras back there? Give them each a Bell and Howell camera. We want you to record with your Bell and Howells this trip. One can photograph the other and vice versa. And when you're both up there dropping at the same time, you can bribe the guards or do something you want, anything you want. You all set? We have expense money for you. We have your airplane tickets. You'll be back on the next show to tell us whether or not what Galileo found out hundreds of years ago is still true. Set, fellas? On your way. Right out there, the airplane's way. Say goodbye to the audience. <laughs> oh, boy. What a vacation trip they have. Two University of Oklahoma boys flying to Europe. They'll loaf around over there for an hour or two and then fly back. <laughs> Every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other TV. Give your family the luxury of big change RCA Victor television. New low boy models. Long, low, lovely. New full door consoles. The ultimate in fine furniture. Every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other TV. Get RCA Victor Television at the lowest prices in history. You can own a big change RCA Victor for as little as one forty nine ninety five. Make this your year for new RCA Victor Television. Every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other TV. I know that everybody in the country has heard the old gag about employees deliberately losing to their bosses in golf or bridge or something because they don't want to get the boss mad. Well, we thought on People Are Funny tonight we'd take a different tack. That we would pick a lady out of the audience and see whether or not she would deliberately lose a quiz contest to a stranger. Now, not just any stranger, but a stranger who'd had a chance to talk to her. Backstage right now in a soundproof room with a hidden microphone is a lady picked out of the audience. She told me that her job is to take temperatures of crankshafts. We'll see how her temperature goes at what's going to happen. Because the stranger who's in the room with her and she saw picked out of the audience along with her as a volunteer is not really a volunteer at all. He's our spy and he is going to make a proposition to her. So listen to his pitch as right now we signal him and cut in our microphone. So, Engineer and John, give Mr. Weaver, our man, the signal. Listen. Gee, we haven't got much time, and I'm a little bit embarrassed about this situation. I've been thinking about this quiz that we're going to go on today, and we both want to win awfully bad, both for a couple of different reasons. Mm -hmm. Seems like you're interested in the prizes, and I'm interested in winning for the prestige of winning. Now, I've got a little proposition I'd like to make to you where nobody will get hurt, and we'll both get what we want. Now, if you would hedge a little bit on those questions and let me win, I'll give you all the prizes because they don't mean anything to me. It's just it's a proposition that I've got to win because it's embarrassing to me if I don't. And uh, what do you think of that? I mean, it's... Well, they'll probably ask me some questions that I won't be able to answer anyhow. So well, it's... Uh, I, I don't know. It's... Well, there's, this is one way of making sure that you go back to Indiana with, uh, you know, the prizes and so forth. And, Here's, here's where I'm up against, see, my boss is out in the audience there today, and so is my wife, and we've got a half a dozen guests with us, and I've always been a blowhard and telling them how good I am on quiz programs and so forth. And gosh, if I don't win this, I'm, I'll never live a dime. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't feel quite right about it, but... Well... Well, if you... Uh... I know you'll be hurt by it. I mean, it's only a program. No, I, mean, I know it is. What the heck? I mean, you'll be happy, I'll be happy, which is the important thing, isn't it? I mean, well, they, they got you're, their program. Well, you're liable to win. Uh, win, uh, win uh, well, I, I, uh, if I win, then you won't get a prize. I mean, I don't need the prize that they give away in these programs. Mm -hmm. I, I just come up here for 
the fact that I wanted to be on a quiz program myself and mm-hmm. not actually to be too winning. Well, if you want to win that bad, why, it's, I guess it'll be all right. Well, now it's settled. Okay. I mean... How are you folks getting along? Oh, we're getting along all right, thanks. Well, I'll be back in a couple minutes and you'll go on the stage. Okay. Don't get nervous now. We're already nervous. If I get any more nervous, I'll be two people. Now it's agreed. Well, where is the... Uh, uh, well, I'll ask you the questions. And then you ask me the questions. If you can't, I'll give you the answer. Uh, where is that? Test? That way you win no matter what happens. Agreed? Okay. Shake. We're partners. Mm-hmm. All I wanted was win the contest, and my boss doesn't think I'm a fool. Uh-huh. I go out to Golden Boom, and I haven't won. I'm sweating like that. Uh, I bet that'll be it. Well, no matter what it is, I'll... Oh, yeah. Here it is. I'll bet you'll be on this. Now, let's see. Uh, what's the first one? Score, first quarter. Does he roll it well? I can, just see Mr. I can just see Mr. Billingsley now. Situation. Does he keep <laughs> a steady position and wait for a safe distance oh, or a the... safe chance to pass? That's I wonder two. what the question is. They're studying. Oh, they're studying out of quiz books mm-hmm. we gave them. Usually they got a bunch of books. They're reading. Well, sometimes. See, that's the habit. idea right now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's They've all been set. studying together for about ten minutes. All right, cut them off, engineer. Cut them off. Now, we want to see whether a woman out of the audience will feel sympathetic enough to some poor guy whose boss is in the audience so that he will win a contest. And I'm going to give her easy questions. If she misses those, she's got to throw the contest. And she's never met him before just a few minutes ago. All right, go get them and bring them in. They sounded like conspirators, didn't they, in there? He says, remember, i got to win. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our next stunt, a quiz contest between two people, pre-selected... Oh, come right in. Out of the audience. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, you are Mrs.? Yanko. Mary Yanko. From? Gary, Indiana. And Mrs. Yanko, are you a tourist out here? Yes, I am. Did you ever have any idea you'd be on people or Gosh, friends? no. <laughs> but you just stuck I... your hand up. Huh? I just took a chance. <laughs> yes, well, that's wonderful. What do you do back in uh, your hometown? I'm an observer. I take uh, temperatures of rails and crankshafts, Cr- automobile crankshafts. Well, uh, wh- what do you do? Have a thermometer you stick in the engine? Huh? <laughs> no, uh, I have an instrument that I take the temperatures of uh, the rails and steel with. Well, now, I've never known about this before. What should a good, normal, average, healthy crankshaft have in the way of a temperature? Well, anything up to 1,100, between 700 and 1,100. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll bet you never thought that there was a woman rail taker temperature of in the United States. Is there any future to this job? What kind of money does it pay? Oh, very good. Are you married? (laughs) Yes. What's your husband do? He's a stalker in the mill. And is he with you tonight? No, he's at home. I'm on vacation. Well, good for you, (laughs) Mrs. Yanko. Yes. Oh, yes, that's nice. Well... I don't need my temperature taken, thanks, just the same. My crankcase is in great shape. Your name, sir? Dick Weaver. What do you do, Mr. Weaver? I'm the manager at the Golden Bull Steakhouse over in East Whittier. Ah, and as the manager, what is your main job? To seat people or to run the kitchen or what? Well, I seat people, run the kitchen, run the bar, do the bus work, anything that happens to be done. How big a restaurant is it? We'll seat 150 people. Ah, fine, Uh uh-huh. And you're an ambitious young fella and probably married? Very married. Like to have a, a restaurant of your own someday? Very true. And be serving a bull of your own? Two or three bulls. Yes. Uh, well, you've come to the right place. I have an unlimited amount of bull. Well, now, the idea of tonight's quiz show is to pick a man and a woman out of the audience and just have a little fun with a quiz game, which we do from time to time. And we'd like to see which one of you can win in a little contest. We'll alternate questions back and forth. So we'll start right out. Mrs. Yanko? Yes. What is the, uh, what kind of a fruit is a bing? A cherry. A cherry. That is correct. Now, your question, sir, what do they call a male goose? A gander. A gander. That is correct. Now, what is a Rome beauty, Mrs. Yanko? Now, remember, this is a contest, so everybody try their best. What is a Rome beauty? An apple. That is right. It's an apple. You've got two right. Mr. Weaver, what do they call a male sheep? A ram. What? A ram. A ram. That is correct. Two and two. Now, the contest gets hotter now. What is an Alberta? Peach. A peach. That is correct. Well, you're plenty good, Mrs. Yanko. Did you know that? 
I just guessed that. Well, it's excellent. What do they call a male hog? A boar. A boar. That is correct. What kind of a fruit is a Valencia? Mrs. Yanko, what is a Valencia? A grape. You've never heard of a Valencia? No. It's an orange. It's an orange. You are wrong. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yes. Heard, yeah. What do they call a male elephant? A bull. A bull. And finally, Mrs. Yanko, what kind of a fruit is a green gauge? Plum. That is correct. And you have one wrong, you have none wrong so far. What do they call a female deer? A doe. That is correct. That is the end of the contest, and I would like to ask you something right now. Did you do your best? I tried to. <laughs> and you did your best? My best. Uh-huh. Mrs. Uh, Yanko, what were you and Mr. Weaver talking about in there before you came out here? Well, we were wondering what kind of uh, questions we, you were going to ask us. Mm-hmm. Did and... Mr. Weaver make any kind of a proposition to you? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're wondering how I would know? <laughs> huh? You must have had a mic in there. <laughs> not only did we have a microphone in there, but Mr. Weaver is not just a contestant, but we put him up to it. <laughs> and what I would like to know is, what did you say to him, and why did you not try... Why did you... You tried to win anyhow, didn't you? Yes. Didn't he offer you something? Yes. What did he <laughs> offer you? Surprises. If you would lose. Mm-hmm. And make him look good. Mm-hmm. But you didn't do it. No. Why not? Well, I... I don't know. Did you agree that you would? Yes. <laughs> In other words, in there, you agreed to throw the contest and let him have the prize. Well, he wanted to look good in front of his boss. <laughs> That's what he said, and you were soft-hearted. Yes. And you said you would. Yes. Well, why didn't you deliberately throw it? I don't know. I couldn't. You just couldn't. Is that the answer? Yes. In other words, you could not cheat, even if you had agreed to. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a very interesting thing. Here's a woman who almost became a part of a conspiracy. And at the last minute when she got out here, you wouldn't lose, would you? No. The invitation to dinner is still true. What's that? The invitation to dinner is still whole. Oh, he not... Oh, that was his own idea to offer you a free dinner. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't know how this was going to go, but it took an unexpected turn. I thought you would either agree to cheat and lose and stick with it or disagree, but you did the unexpected that none of us could have guessed. You agreed one place, disagreed another. So we have proved tonight that women are still the most changeable creatures ever born. <laughs> huh? How about that? You were honest enough to have your conscience at the last moment come to your rescue and you wouldn't cheat even to help him. So we're going to give you for your home, a beautiful consolation prize of a Tappan range, a great big oh. range with all its exclusive features. <laughs> Mr. Weaver, you're a good talker, Thank you, and I want to give you my best wishes. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you very much. If you like more adventure of the Western type, you'll enjoy listening to The Lone Ranger, heard every Monday through Friday on NBC Radio. From out of the action pack west rides the masked man who is a friend to those who need help and feared by the outlaws and desperados. Astride his white horse Silver and accompanied by his faithful friend Tonto, The Lone Ranger is always on hand to uphold justice in the lawless west. You'll enjoy every thrilling episode of The Lone Ranger, heard each weekday on NBC Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, again, People Are Funny plays the $10,000 word game. Over the last few weeks, we've been trying to give away $10,000 in cash in a game that only takes a couple of minutes to play. And our guest selected out of the audience on the basis of someone who volunteered and who has never won anything in their life is waiting backstage and has no idea 
what kind of a stunt she was selected for. She doesn't know anything about what's coming up. So let's bring her in and see what fun we have as we reveal what we're going to do. Uh, can we have the young lady, please? <clears throat> Hello. Over this way. Hello. You were just selected a moment ago out of our audience, and you had no idea you'd be on the show when you came here tonight, did no, you? No, I didn't. Your no. Mrs.? Delbert Hahn. Now, you know what kind of a show this is, Mrs. Hahn. Yes, I do. Anything can happen to you. Yes. Uh, you're willing to do anything. Yes. Try anything. Yes. You're a good sport. Yes. All right. Now, you remember I asked for a volunteer, Mrs. Hone, is it? Hahn, H-A-H-N. Uh-huh. Who never won anything. Have you ever tried? Send in box no. tops? No. No. Why not? Do you, do you... Because I feel like the law of averages against me. <laughs> you give up before you even start. But I, I try to enter my children in things. Yeah, have they ever won anything? No, but we're trying right now to uh -huh. win a coloring contest. Uh -huh. Have you ever bought a ticket for a, a bingo game or an Irish sweepstakes or anything? No. You, you don't Just take... women's uh, society, you know, a little... Or raffle mm -hmm. or something. You never have won anything? Like... No, never. What does your husband do? Uh, he's a salesman for Weber's Baking Company. Ah, and you have how many children? Two. Two children. Well, now, Mrs. Hahn, I'll bet you'd like to win some money. Oh, I would very much so. Uh-huh. I'm going to unveil something here and let you look at this wheelbarrow. What do you see? Money. $10,000 in cash. Are you still breathing? Yes. That's all yours in the next two minutes if you win a game that we have here on the stage. And here's how we play the game. If you will look around here, you will see a number of letters. A-C-R-E-S. In fact, that's a word, isn't it? Yeah, a word. But these letters can be moved in any position that you wish them to be moved, and you can make five different words with those same letters. You can see what letters, what words you can make. And back of one of these letters, you see I can move this and pull it up, behind one of them is the letter one, and behind the other four are the figures zero. So if you have the right word at the end of the game, the letter with the number one is up here and you get 10,000. If it's another word, the letter with the one will be here and you get 1,000, or 100, or 10, or one dollar. Now, Mrs. Holmes. Do you want to take this word? This might be the $10,000 word. Or you can change it to another word. You'd like to change it. It's entirely up to you. Make another word. Just switch it right around. Races. Now, do you, do you have any uh, a hunch about it? Why, why did you change it and not take our word? Huh? Well, I don't know. You didn't say that the other... Well, I mean, I just thought I'd take a chance. All right. I just wondered because, uh, you know, people don't trust us. And they think... Uh, I didn't mean to imply that. Oh, oh, you didn't? No. You didn't think that we'd be sneaky enough to give you the $10 word and hope you'd take it and save ourselves $9,990. Oh, I wasn't thinking that at all. Are you sure? I wasn't thinking at all. But you, in other words, changed it around so you would take our 10000 No, no. You don't want our 10000 Yes, I'll take that, but is it... Well, I'll see. You stand over here now where I was standing, right here, and turn around, and we'll see what happens. We're looking for the letter one. We're looking for the letter one. Yes. Well, so far you have $10,000. If the one's here, you've won $10, and you have won... Oh... All right, let's try this one. $10,000 if the one is back of this R. Come to me. You have $1,000 or $100 left. The choice, haven't you? In other words, yes. this is 1000 or 100 uh -huh. Now, Mrs. Hone... If you want to, I'll just call off the game now and give you $500 in cash. You can take that home and spend it. <laughs> what did the others do that took a chance? <laughs> or we can go on and play the game the way it was meant to be played. I think I'll... 
try this. Is see, it a thousand or one? It's a thousand or one hundred dollars. Now you see, you've already taken one chance. Or do. You want to take another one? Yes. No, I think that I'll take the chance, please. You will take the, the chance. chance. All right. Does that mean that the chances are a thousand to one that I would guess it? No, no, one to two. That's right. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not no, too no. no, wait a minute. No, look. no, it's very simple to figure out. I have two chances. This is a thousand yes. and this is a hundred. See, if the one is back here, it's a hundred, or here, it's a thousand. Now, if you take the thousand, the thousand divided by the hundred, you see, is ten. Then you take the multiple of ten, which is two, over a factor of five, which gives you... I'll take the ten. Now, there's no way to figure. You want to take the ten. Because I'd be happy with either. All right, you go on back over there, and we'll see. It's up to you. We'll take the A and the C. It's a thousand dollars if the one's back here, or it's a hundred if it's there. I'd like to. I'd like to point out something for people who think we are sneaky characters. The word was acres. A C R E S. If you hadn't touched it, you'd have gotten $10,000. We were trying to give you the money, Mrs. Holmes. But $1,000 is not oh, bad, is it? I should say not. I'm very happy. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I have some wonderful charitable things that I want to do. Some charity things? What's your number charitable. one charity? Oh, uh, Korea. We have a Bible club in Korea that we're supporting, and I've been saving my allowance to send, and I'm going to... Oh, I'm A Bible club from which yes. church? Uh, well, it, it isn't from a church. It's, it's our Presbyterian... Uh, they're orphans over in Korea, and there are 85 of them, and our church club sponsors one Bible club, which teaches them to... Uh, read and write and their religion. It's all the education they have. Well, I can't think of a better thing for that thousand dollars to go toward. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hahn. Well, let's call it a day for another week. Next week on People Are Funny, a man, a maid, and the sneakiest lie detector you ever heard about. Be sure to listen. Good night, everybody. This program was transcribed from Hollywood.